Okay, so we showed some characteristic that occurs for a transistor just a moment ago. So here we have our plot that's showing IC versus VCE. We're going to look at two examples, IC versus VCE for a real transistor and for an ideal transistor. So looking at the ideal transistor, we would expect our characteristic curves to do something like this. They'd have very flat slopes once the transistor reaches saturation. And what this implies is that we can't change the current uh, no matter what we do to the voltage. And hence, that implies that we have an infinite output resistance when the transistor is in this state. Now, a real transistor doesn't function quite like this. So if we look at a real transistor, and I'm going to exaggerate the, the slopes a bit, the output is going to have some slope. So we're going to see that the output current will change with the collector to emitter voltage to some degree. And I've exaggerated this quite a bit. I also haven't put scale on, so it doesn't really matter. But what we see, uh, ultimately, is that that slope, M, is proportional to 1 over the output resistance of the transistor. Now, what you'd find with a bipolar transistor is if we were to project these curves back to the x-axis, they'd all intersect at one point, and that point would be called the early voltage. which is denoted by VA, early voltage. So if we were to take the slope of these curves, it would be equal to IC divided by VA minus VCE. And this we would define as the output resistance, output conductance of the transistor, G sub zero, and this is equal to 1 over R sub 0. Now, we approximate this usually as just IC over VA, since VA is usually much larger than VCE. One other thing that we have to take care of with our transistor is that there is base current flowing in our device. And so we know that the transistor has current gain. We can normally say that IB is equal to, I base is equal to IC divided by beta F. So this is the current gain of the transistor. The collector current is a, a factor of beta F times bigger than the base current. Well, we also know that IC is equal to the transconductance times the base to emitter voltage, times the change in the base to emitter voltage. So we can substitute this in and find that IB is equal to IC divided by beta F times VT times VBE. And if we make one further definition here, R pi is equal to VBE over IB. Then we have beta F over GM. So the input resistance of the transistor is going to be equal to beta F over GM. And I should be consistent with my subscripts here. These Bs should be lowercase since we're implying small signal. All right, so with all of these things put together, we can actually now make our small signal model. And our small signal model looks like this. The base resistance goes between the base and the emitter. That's that current that's flowing from uh, the re uh, recombination of uh, holes and electrons in the base. So this is our R pi. The output resistance of the transistor goes between the collector and the emitter. The transistor, remember, the, is converting input voltage to output current. And it's going to do so with a voltage-dependent current source that goes between the collector and the emitter. And this voltage dependence is equal to GM times V 
BE, the ratio or the, 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 the difference between the base to emitter voltage. Now to round out our model, remember we uh, also have some depletion regions to deal with with the uh, transistors and so we also will add in general some capacitances. So our first capacitance that the bipolar transistor has is called C pi. That's the capacitance that's in parallel with R pi is the easiest way to think about it. And the capacitance spanning from the base to the collector was called C mu from earlier. So this is our small signal model. Uh, what we do is we find our DC point and then we can extract all these small signal parameters and we can do some basic circuit analysis to find the gain of the transistor. Now, if you were to try and find the gain of this, the intrinsic gain of this transistor, and we were to label, say, the base as the input and the collector as the output, what you would find is the voltage gain is equal to AV, which is equal to GM times the output resistance of the transistor. Now, this is called the intrinsic voltage gain of the transistor, and no matter what we do, the gain of, the, of a transistor can never be higher than its intrinsic gain. We're going to look at MOS transistors next.